and uh, I'll take the chance to welcome everyone to the second technical workshop on the Android Automotive Special Interest Group. And it will be led by our topic experts, Stefan Waisoki and Wasim Filali. So I'll turn over to you immediately, Stefan. You can start sharing. I think you're on mute, Stefan. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can hear you now. Uh. Okay. Uh. So, let me just do the full screen first. Um. So, welcome everybody once again. Uh. Together with Asim, we'll try to go through uh some interesting topics that needs your input. Not only the the input from the working group that we perhaps already known uh their opinions, but Maybe somebody from outside uh, to um, somehow influence our next steps in both um, subgroups. I mean, audio and uh, vehicle project, vehicle API. Uh, so we've agreed to have uh, some kind of um, two um, two um, sections that can be. Um, Adjusted based on your interest, it should, if we should more focus on the on the um, questions or topic from the audio hall, or we should focus more uh, during this workshop on the on the um, on the vehicle side. So uh, from my side, I prepared uh, three topics that we can discuss today. Uh, so the first one is uh, about some kind of an, in general. As you might remember, right now we are focusing on uh, uh, some kind of linking the AOSP properties to the VSS uh, formatted properties. I mean, how GenEV should uh, be involved here? I mean, we could um, do some kind of, um, uh, as, as we have already, some vehicle signals uh, that are um, documented or specialized in the VSS by, by W3C and Genevi. Uh, then uh, we have some kind of a binding between the AUSP and the, um, and the VSS. And of course, we have we could have some meta language that is able to um, allow OEM to uh, to to write their own binding on their own, right? Because we don't know if uh, we uh, how proprietary it should be, right? We could, as Genevieve, we could just standardize the whole binding. I mean, the whole. VSS3 map to Android or le left it to the um, to the real OEM. Then the GNV role will be to just um, formalize the way of describing this binding, right? We could also provide some other stuff like like the tooling, the conversion, or even the the whole converter implementation that could be reused in the um, in the future project. So uh, we yeah. we would like to know that uh, our your input about that. The second one is uh, some kind of um, brief discussion uh, or long discussion. Uh, is the Android SDK for accessing the vehicle properties uh, enough for the for the third party developers or OEMs? And the third one is uh, about um, like a follow up of the first bullet about the brainstorming of the uh, meta language for uh, describing this uh, conversions between the VSS and Android, and uh, the next mm -hmm. good. Yeah. So um, may I, Stefan, give uh, Stefan give a brief overview about the audio points? Yes, of course. I, I just want okay. to the voice right now. So thank you very much. So um, from the audio point of view, it's uh, these points, the bullets that we see on the right side. Um, the first important topic in audio it's um with regard to speeding up the time to market and having um systems that are more complex that require more than one operating system uh, is a virtualization topic so 
how can we minimize the changes to Android by using YAS yeah, solution? We know there is the Trout initiative, the Virtio. And uh, at the same time, we do have a uh, lots of hardware specific DSP processing, low level routing. So that's uh, the first uh, discussion point. The second is about uh, simulation, which is also a point that can um, speed up the time to market because sometimes we already have the functions. We know what we want to do. We can run it on a PC environment, but we get the new hardware. So how can we simulate hardware acceleration in a seamless environment together with an Android emulator? So I don't have my DSP functions running on their own, but really interconnected with um, a real Android running on emulated device. The third point, it's the multiple microphones usage in Android. Um, there is the possibility to have custom microphone devices, but if uh, a generic third party app wants to record audio, then it's going to use the default microphone and that default microphone doesn't fit in a car where we are supposed to know that there are multiple passengers that each could have a microphone we could maybe uh, respond to person sitting on a special place although android do have the user id that is coming um, recently in the latest version on of android when it comes to microphone it's a little bit less uh, clear and uh, the last point, the multiple devices collaboration. Um, Android is focusing on one device operating system, but when we are in a car, we might have rear seat entertainment that should be that should have a consistent integration with the head unit and not be considered as a completely independent Android device. So this is um, last point. Yes. Thanks. So, so, Stefan, I think we could uh, suggest the audience to pick a point and then we could alternate video, uh, VHAL and audio, and then we see how we go further. Yeah, yeah, we could start with that. So, is somebody from the audience interested in some of those topics or have its own input on, on, on that? Or, or maybe we didn't list the topics that are interesting for people and, that, and in that case then feel free just to jump in and mention what would be the topics you would be interested in that's also fine yeah that's fine as well so especially yes. it's great to have some input from other oems or tire ones who has some usages in mind in regards to both topic or the use cases that we could align our development in the future because it's not all, always talking about the finding the right blocks but we need to know what for we need those blocks right yeah i see several several names on the uh the participant list that aren't usually part of our project. So there's Savinash, there's Claude, there's uh, uh, Manu we have spoken to previously this week. There's Prashant and uh, Stefan. I guess you have some connection to the topic, uh, so feel free to to jump in if you'd have some some viewpoints around this. Does it make sense the, the the discussions that we're having? Maybe that's the starting point. Um, I, I can jump in here. This is Jeff Dever from Ford. Um, so there's there's quite a few topics here to look at. Um, I guess one of the um, one of the things I try and think forward to is um, what does Android look like in the future? What, is, what do apps look like in the future? Are they still interacting with the HAL using vehicle properties? 
or are they interacting with something else? Um, I would love for that to be something else, um, meaning some other API to um, uh, to a VSS uh, data tree. Um, and I think there's many ways that that, that could be done, um, but the sort of the mess is in the migration. Um, you know, having you know today's AdGuard apps using vehicle properties, uh, able to use VSS tree nodes in the future and, and how to actually achieve that. So that would be an interesting topic from my point of view. Okay, so Vasim, if it's fine for you, we can start with this uh, because it's uh, yes, of course, it is valid. Uh, so yes, uh, I've heard that you've uh, so speak like like the sentence that you've loved to. Actually, I, I I want to actually know or learn uh, why this current approach that Google is proposing. I mean, Google has proposed these vehicle properties and uh, provide some kind of car SDK that is allowed to be used for uh, the third party developers to access such properties. Why is it not sufficient for actually you, your use cases? We've in our group we've uh, evaluated all, all uh, also uh, the other like in parallel uh, API to access it either in a flat structure that is shown here or uh, some more advanced query languages that we've uh, exercised like GraphQL. Uh, but of course, as usual, it depends on the use case. Uh, Google solution for uh, I, I've talked with some of the third party developers. Uh, I mean, the developers, uh, Android developers who are um, developing some 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 apps, which is more or less connected to the to the IVI use cases. And they are fine with using the the standard properties that Android is uh, exposing. So, do you envision other use cases than just I don't know uh, displaying the speed using the the key value from the existing SDK? Or maybe you want to have uh, some um, internal services uh, that is running in Android without the UI, so it's not like application application per se, but uh, it's uh, some kind of internal, I don't know, diagnostic service, which needs to have uh, more deep access to the vehicle network, for example. I don't know, actually, uh, maybe could you, of course, I know that there might be some NDA stuff, uh, but maybe uh, you could elaborate more on the, actually, what's, what's wrong with the current approach that Google is proposing? Then we could brainstorm on, uh, on many other APIs that is possible. Well, so I, I guess you know from a from a, a limitation point of view. So if you just if you just think about um, okay, well, we're talking about in vehicle infotainment, and therefore in vehicle infotainment only needs uh, you know a certain set uh, of of data to uh, access and interact with, and you know those are defined in Android vehicle properties uh, predetermined. And so, if you want, as a uh, as an OEM, if you want to um, uh, to have standard Android applications running on your platform, then you need to implement the VHAL um, and populate these properties somehow. So, you know, in in the age where your IVI system had a CAN connection, you would have some code that was converting from CAN signals. Into uh, and you know populating the VHAL um, directly um, in in a you know maybe a, a more future system if um, if there's virtualization involved um, and and we're not just talking about IVI anymore we're just we're talking about applications running on on the vehicle that may not be limited to in vehicle infotainment. Um, then they need. They also need access to data, and those may be uh, different data fields than what are currently defined in uh, VHAL properties. So, what do you do? Make up your own new VHAL property names that are not standard. Um, that doesn't. That doesn't sound like any better than, um, uh, you know, the the world where we just have everything proprietary and proprietary names. So, if we move towards VSS. 
uh, on the vehicle and not just in the cloud, then it would be convenient for uh, applications running on the vehicle for the purpose of um, uh, in vehicle infotainment, being able to access the same data as applications that are doing um, you know, security or safety or uh, other other functions. So there's sort of room to um, to integrate over a standard data model. And um, you know, VHAL is really limited to um, to Android. Okay, great input actually. So, uh, so yeah, you're saying that um, for the IVI use cases, I mean the the SDK that developers are using for the um, Android applications, uh, it is fine. Uh, but uh, you are trying to. Uh, by limitation of the vehicle hull, you mean that there is a certain set of properties already defined, and if you want to have some more sophisticated, then you need to extend that set by other stuff. Uh, so we've discussed it already. Uh, so uh, as it's stated here, for the Android defined properties are the ones that Google is already defining. And for this, this is the challenge of having this uh, translations between VSS and Android properties, because um, you know that Google is defining already some, some data types for it, but uh, for the um, other VSS leaves that are not defined by Android, we are somehow have more freedom here. Uh, so we could define our own, um, even not manually, we could, of course, create some uh, um, some tooling that uh, could uh, create such uh, extended properties, which is called vendor property. Uh, so vehicle hall in Android allows the vendor for create their own properties, uh, their own names and so on. So those names can also be um, generated from, from the VSS format. Uh, so we could have, let's, because the, all the topics are blending for, with each other. So I don't know if it's uh, described here uh, uh, in a good way, but we have the, the VSpec, which is only the specification of the all possible signals, right? We have the vehicle signals that is somehow uh, a list of the signals that are available in the specific platforms, right? And then we could have some meta language, uh, Okay, we can skip this meta language because right now we could talk about the extension. So um, basically from this, uh, let me say, library of the, of the signals uh, that are, um, or database of the signals that are actually the, the signals that are in the, um, in, the, in the platform. So they are not all the, the specified one, but they are the very specific. So from those, uh, from this database, this, the tooling, specific tooling, can generate the new types in the vehicle hull. Uh, I don't know with the name of of the hull, uh, or, or the, the name which is derived from uh, from um, from the VSpec ID, let me say, and then it could be exposed to the third party application. So, third party application or second party uh, which has perhaps should have more um, knowledge or have more access to um, more sophisticated signals that as I understood you uh, you want to in the future develop not only the IVI apps for from the users or from the third party developers but also have some internal services that are running uh, on the Android, right? And then access some some signals uh, that are, let me say, more vendor specific. So those stuff can be, um, this tooling can also be think as a one of the, on the future milestone if, uh, if the audience requests that. So I assume that you'd like to see some something like this. Um, so from the VSS format or from the VSS dictionary or library uh, that is on the one platform, you could deploy it on, on some kind of um, place, then um, then from this could be generated this types.hull, which is actually used by the vehicle hull to expose the, the whole of the properties. 
I don't know if I understand your uh, uh, your statements, but I think that I, I think you went through most of the options there, Stefan. So there's the aspect of standardizing the way that VSS trans translates to existing Android properties. There's the potential of adding new properties that match VSS signals. Yes. And then there's, of course, the, the track we have discussed before, which is to have a kind of complete server for uh, accessing VSS data that that uh, could also be uh, made available to the Android system. Um, and then I think we don't have the answers today, but the questions that come up are uh, whether or not there's a, there's a set of applications that follow the standard of, of the extended data, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, the, and that set of applications, of course, doesn't then, I mean, anything you, you get from a standard app store will kind of be required to access only the, the, the Google official APIs. And if you extend that, then you have a set of applications that, that may have be working on when I say APIs, I, I include the access of data there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, but and that that set could. I mean, uh, if the industry now uh, aligns around VSS, that could actually become a kind of a standard in itself that either influences AOSB and becomes uh, a standard there, or something that that is uh, on, on this a little bit on the side, but still a de facto standard. And so, so I think those are the open questions, but we, we don't have the, the answers to those yet. And, and you, yeah, you, also, you already, just to wrap up, you already covered the case where the OEM may choose to do this on their own because they have their own applications that they develop that only need to function on their vehicle. And therefore they can, of course, choose to use any API or data that is available. Yep, there was a. Yeah, it was Philip. Hi, Philip. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to say um, a, a similar thing. This architecture with these two ways to um, push the data from uh, from the vehicle to, to 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 apps. There is a Google way, okay, which is fully relevant for infotainment, but OEMs they want to to uh, push um, a lot of data. And much more data than what is available in, a, in in the vehicle properties, and uh, these these are kind of architecture is already deployed as far as I know. Okay, I cannot mention the <laughs> I had a long discussion with an OEM and and they, and they done it. Okay, so the interesting thing there that we are gener generating things from VSS. Okay, and then I hand it over back to to Gunnar for further comment. That's that's a uh... That's exactly what I meant, and thanks for confirming that, Philippe. Okay, but but still, um, the Google way. Uh, so Google is defining the the properties, right? But they are also defining a generic way of accessing it. So if we are want to introduce new new properties, uh, by properties I mean the new signals uh, that are not covered by the already defined by Google. Um, then this is something that is called vendor property extension, I believe. Uh, so those properties uh, can be exposed in the same way as others, but uh, the security aspect is uh, works that, that in a way that uh, those properties are protected by a various of the vendor permissions. Uh, so they're using the standard Android uh, permissions mechanism. So. Um, I still wonder why is it not enough for uh, for for those use cases. Uh, so, if you create your own OEM specific applications or service or platform specific, then you could you are able to access the the other properties that are not exposed by to the um, to the Google Play or whatever store market uh, developers but you could use the same API but with the different uh, 
access rights, right? Because you could have um, uh, granted permissions to access those extended vendor properties. So we could still use those uh, green green path without introducing our own VSS Android uh, SDK. Let me say for for the Android. If you if you are um, interested only in the uh, publish subscribe or subscribe and get set uh, API, then Google API is fine for this because you could you could subscribe for. Uh, from given vendor property and third party applications is not allowed to do that because it's uh, protected with the vendor permission. Um, if I'm not I sure if anyone is saying that it's not possible to do it that way, Stefan. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know that there is a other way to do that, but I'm... Uh... No, I you're saying why is it not enough and i i'm not sure anyone is saying that it's not enough okay but uh, for me uh, i understood that if somebody uh, wants to push parallel solution to the one that google is for example in that case google is doing it means that it's not satisfied somebody is not satisfied with the current framework that's why it introduced uh, some parallel one right and i want to actually find try to find the gaps i'm not uh, you know i'm just uh, conducting the discussion i'm not really against or or pro mm. the, the solution i'm just trying to learn why is but it this like this seems like a discussion we had fairly early in this in mm -hmm. this team where um there was a proposal to have an external data server with uh, using graphql or something like that Yes. Are you asking for the arguments for you know in in favor of that of that design? Yeah, I'm trying to learn uh, or find the gaps of the current implementation to actually uh, predict or uh, involve our work into resolving those gaps, right? Because mm -hmm. introducing new API just to introducing new API, which looks similar, I don't know if it's point to do that. Right. Especially so, we are thinking about it, some, the so same again, this subscribe. this goes back to if we if we try to answer the question, this goes back to to you know uh, uh, quite far back in our discussions and 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 uh, at the moment we're working on the um, translation to vehicle properties as you know, we mm -hmm. sort of put the focus there right now since there, that's where the most drive is. But if we want to summarize the arguments, it was um, that, you know, GraphQL is, is a more capable query language. It's a very powerful language to use. Um, it was the capability of applications to to use existing libraries to do that access uh, that that was um, was promoted by by some um, in a sense that you you don't need to define your own extra things in, in the Android platform. You just let applicate, you can just develop applications and, and nothing else. You don't need to define anything in the HAL or in the framework itself to add those properties, but the applications are going directly to an external server and don't involve the Android platform at all in, in some sense. So, so that's a way to kind of decouple the, the development of those applications from, from any type of platform development. But but in my view, the 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 main the more important question here is that it doesn't really, I don't think it matters that much what API it is if it's through vehicle properties or, or 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 something else. In both cases, you are creating a, a kind of proprietary API. In both cases, you are accessing things that are not guaranteed to be on every Android system, and and therefore I I don't I think that's a bigger question than than the technology chart choice in in my view um th there are some other arguments as well like the fact that you you can organize data hierarchically with a deep tree in vss which we found the the naming of properties to be a bit flat and and uh and, and a little bit uh, probably not optimized for thousands of signals so that was another argument uh, in the comparison. Yeah, I, I know that the, 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 I, I remember those arguments, uh, but I, right now, I, I, for sure, it's better for some use cases, but I uh, try to actually find 
do actually industry want such features from the GraphQL, right? Or from mm -hmm. more advanced query language? Maybe they 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 still want to use it in some kind of uh, subscribe of of each property, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. It depends on how much you want to go, how much you want to sort of um, design for a more general case that isn't driven completely by by the choices made by Android, but more like a, a, an API that may be applicable on multiple platforms and so on. That's another aspect, but uh, yeah, I I don't know if the industry wants that. I think it's an open question from very valid one for you to ask and remains to be seen uh, as, as we work further with this. Mm, yeah, I agree, but I don't hear any voices from the from the audience uh, so i know that it's hard to conclude on everything mm. um, no i agree let's hear it let's hear the opinions from mm -hmm. the um, i also but... wanted to ask the audience um do we have some people who came uh from audio for for the audio mm. topic or otherwise i think we can go on with the with the vehicle hal but i just want to ask the audience yeah it's time to ask that question So if no one protests, I think we can go on. We are maybe extra time, but we can go on with it. We, we do have uh, some extra time. This is uh, the uh, last session for today. So okay. um, if we go a little bit extra time and people are interested, um, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps, perhaps if I ask the same question, who came here from the vehicle, I will say, I will listen mm -hmm. to the silence as well. <laughs> no, I assume that as no one protested from the audio, then all of them are for the vehicle hall. <laughs> no, no, no both, both are very interesting, but it's yeah. interesting. Yeah. I think okay. so the people are generally interested in this. So, so Stefan, yeah, feel free to ask if there's additional input. Um, I you said something like why is this not good enough and i'm just pointing out that i have not heard anyone's state one way or the other i don't think anyone has said that today at least uh, that that it's not good enough mm -hmm. right it's more uh, more of an open question Um, I, I have a very open question because I see API to Android SDK. Is it meant Android automotive, so the operating system, or the um, smartphone SDK? And the second question is, mm -hmm. is there not any alternative for an open API because there are other different smartphone uh, Either mobile services or operating system, or why is the API only for Android historically? I mean, yeah, so actually, those um, API is uh, some kind of uh, API to access the, um, the vehicle signal from the Android. So, when, when I was uh, stating here Android SDK, I was mentioning the SDK that is used for writing the application for the android automotive so in principle it's a uh, part of the sdk that is i believe it's called uh, core carlib which is uh, the library which is used for accessing the vehicle uh, vehicle signals or vehicle properties so this this ballot is about to discuss uh do we really need to have an alternative to the current solution uh, the current uh, sdk uh, which google is proposing uh, yeah i think that uh, is this clarification clear for you francois yeah yeah the the first question is answered but uh, i mean in standardization we are used to have um, 
interfaces which are kind of open interface. So maybe the second question, is this API uh, easy to uh, access by other uh, uh, mobile phone uh, operating system or mobile services uh, like uh, Apple? Or, uh, yeah, so first of all, to answer your first question, Francois, we are, we are speaking about an Android automotive platform here. So meaning that the Android operating system is executing in the actual in-car infotainment unit. And so we're not speaking about connecting to a phone, but rather that Android is running on the card directly. That's the primary focus of this discussion. And um, so the API here is between applications that are on that embedded car systems and the platform that it runs on. Does that does that clarify? Hundred percent. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, um, Gunnar and Stefan, we have um, two questions. One from Prashant in the chat, and a similar one. Yeah. So, yeah. No, he also then confirmed. He said, "I would be interested in audio hall. Maybe a short, brief explanation would be fine." I'm new to audio system automotive. Um, so I will try to summarize in one or two sentences what the discussion in Audio Hall is about and what why we are discussing about it. So the Audio Hall is simply if you have an Android audio application, let's say a media player playing music, you have to connect it with your uh, hardware, which is having the audio output. So it's not a big deal, so to say, you only get a stream. Uh, and you have the output and you can hear it. But now start the complications because um, you do have a navigation system that has that is very important and has to be heard. So that if you're playing uh, music and you have the Navi and you cannot hear it, then you would miss it for driving, it would be important. And then we start discussing about the mixing rules. Um, what is the context used by the application? And then in the automotive, we might have a special application that require a special type of priority or um, context management. So the open question would be, what is the default Android priority matrix and how is it possible to customize it to a special application? Another example of discussion is the audio effects. So um, in a car, it's a different structure, different volume. So we would like to be able to adjust the bus and the settings. And they are all vendor specific. So the interface sometimes might not be enough from Android to fulfill. Let's say a new vendor came up with a new effect that doesn't exist on the market yet. Then how do we control it from Android if it's supposed to be generic? And the last point, um, the microphone. So in Android, you have you can query the microphone device, but if in the car you have four microphones, then um, how should Android be aware of all the steps of echo cancelling, noise reduction, and everything? Or should it simply get the mixture or a selection uh, from the microphone and all of that being handled outside Android? These are the type of um, uh, problematics we are looking at. So if you have any further requests for clarification or question, feel free to uh, answer or type in the chat. Yeah, you're welcome. I guess went through in your overview, uh, Wasim, also the the idea of creating a, a development environment for, for audio. Um, I think that's a very interesting uh, direction of, of the discussions we've had lately. Mm -hmm. Right. The simulation, I believe, is the most innovative point uh, that can be relevant for multiple OEMs because um, the OEMs would like to build a know-how and have an own audio pipeline. And this audio pipeline should not be dependent on the Android release cycles. 
like we should have uh, normal like PC simulation tools that can uh, simulate the audio and the audio uh, like concept are not like Android release coming every year. And now, if now I have a new Android release that is different than the previous one and working differently, of course it comes with an emulator. But now if I manage to have my audio simulation and the Android emulator running together, then as soon as the Android version goes out, I can have the audio experts connected with the Android emulator to take the most of these uh, new Android functions. And then the porting would be a second step once we have a reference design running on emulated simulation and emulation, then the rest would be a uh, fast forward integration on the target. So if anyone has experience with audio simulation or something, yeah, if you want to comment on that, um, feel free to let us know. So Gunal, from this topic, as here we are openly discussing with the audience, what could be our focus for um, uh, yeah, the, the next period? The, particip the participants, I like to say, since this is not a show, but a discussion, <laughs> right? Instead of audience, I mean. Yeah. 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 But sorry, go on. Uh -huh. um, so yeah. Maybe we can share which um, topic we think might be interesting and maybe someone would say, no, I prefer the other one or could you elaborate on another one? Sure. So how many of you are, are in some sense um, involved in audio development or? Doing something related to it. Well, Manu, I, I am, but uh, and very interested in on these items. Uh, typically, for the hardware acceleration, the hardware acceleration is more or less proprietary to the uh, actual uh, chipset vendor, and it might be difficult to uh, simulate. But maybe there are some other options. Um, that is true to some extent, but things are changing. So um, there are some available audio frameworks on the market that try to make an abstraction over different vendors' SOCs in a way that they want to dissociate the audio acceleration IP from the target. It's like if you use MATLAB. You use MATLAB, you have... Uh, your concept running and then you have some target ports that can run it on different targets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, of uh, course, that depends on what we are talking about in ha hardware acceleration. I was thinking more of an echo, echo cancellation or those uh, items. Yeah, and even particularly the um, echo cancellation, um, I think the algorithms are more or less similar, like each one. They, they the are, Abs yeah. absolutely. Uh, the, the problem is uh, more on the, on the uh, parameterization, where the parameters are not uh, coherent uh, between the vendors. Th that is true, like the parameters, um, we can even refer to that as calibration. You, yeah, you exactly. That? Yeah, yeah. 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 Th that is true. That is something specific to the tool chain and to the algorithm. So it is sometimes done even by the vendor, or sometimes there is kind of a manual and it's more open so that anyone with a little bit of expertise can uh, perform this calibration. Yeah, that is true. I think by enabling simulation tools 
we could create a constant like that's the first stage to allow um, some maybe other vendors to have an expertise and have some kind of a standard and then that standard component can be reused on different platform and only then we manage to dissociate the calibration and parameters expertise from a specific target yeah So Stefan, now should we move to um, maybe another vehicle hull point? Do we still have time, or as long as? Um... Well, there's time to discuss uh, more of the audio stuff if we would like. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm curious. I don't know if you have want to jump in, Piotr, talking about sort of the implementation plan at all. Yeah, actually, I I would like. You would like to. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> uh, so uh, mm, yesterday I showed some virtualization applications that uh, we developed. Uh, so we were basing on this trout and uh, tried to fulfill the, the purpose of connecting to the external amplifier. I guess Vasim, this is uh, could be a, an, an answer to your simulation setup so that we can mm, uh, strictly uh, disconnect the uh, audio effect implementation to the audio pipeline from the head unit. This could definitely help to to, to simulate this and and to to allow yep. to better cooperation with uh, amplifiers manufacturers that that doesn't need to to get, for example, the whole head unit uh, hardware, but just could have the appropriate virtualized machine that can they can drown and they know that they have uh, this stable interfaces <clears throat> um, so the yeah, question is if this simulation answer... virtualization can be connected what do yeah, you think that definitely answers the first question which is which interface do i have between the emulator and the simulation mm. uh, yes and here comes virtualization and its virtualization interfaces so I guess that uh, that in this case the interface to to your um, math simulation that will do that it is all processing stuff would be uh, the virtualization interfaces. Either it would be VTL for PCM devices for for PCM data, or for example socket connection for monitoring uh, the parameters like uh, switching on off uh, particular uh, audio effects or monitoring uh, gain values uh, fade values uh, all, all the control parameters yeah yeah absolutely and then um once i run my, my android on an emulator on my host machine where i have um the simulation of the audio acceleration, then I can move it to the target without actually modifying anything from the Android side. So I guess that this is real life scenario. So we don't have issues that, that uh, have this uh, <laughs> all, all in one, so that it has head, head unit amplifier and so on. So. so there is uh, almost always a physical connection between two, two, two physical boards. Am I right? Maybe the rest of the audience can, can also uh, take part in, the, in this discussion. So I, I assume that, that, yeah, that, that this would be most of the <laughs> yes, cases. <laughs> from my side, yeah, I confirm there always has to be um, separation between like the audio, it could be uh, a different board, it could be a different ECU, it could be different SOC, so yeah. Uh, so from deployment perspective, uh, the, this uh, audio data transfer is actually vendor specific. This could be AVB, this could be some dedicated uh, audio bus like A2B or whatever system is designed like. But if, if we are talking about virtualized device, then there is, uh, there could be at least uh, this uh, kind of a stable interface based uh, on actually virtualization interfaces that are connected to the hypervisor, not to the hardware. 
and I guess that this could be the interfaces also to your simulation uh, lab. Yeah, yeah, it, uh, I, I'm totally with you on that. Um, I think the simulation has two problems. First, uh, the simulation tool and environment and its compatibility and portability to the target. And then comes this connection to uh, the Android emulation. And there, I'm totally with you that the uh, hypervisor interface could be a proper connection mechanism. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking, is there any slide that, that should be shown to support this discussion or could be shown? Uh, okay, I guess that uh, I can try to find the slide from yesterday's presentation showing. That might just be useful as a visual aid for for all our participants. Okay, just let me dig through my disk. There's plenty to discuss as always. Maybe we uh, take another 10 minutes or so and keep this discussion going. There seems to be interest still. And then uh, we have to defer the rest to the daily, weekly project meetings, I think. So yeah, I guess the, uh, this is the picture that shows uh, more or less how it, in most cases this uh, would be organized. So that we have the, the ICU and external amplifier with some physical connection between each other. And here, trout is coming in so that we have a separate virtual machine. Data are actually collected to the device implementation via this hypervisor. And uh, if we are talking about uh, VHIO standard, which seems to be most used standard now currently, we've got these virt queues that uh, are basing on a shared memory and uh, exchanging uh, descriptors between um, throughout the virtual machine and the Linux virtual machine where, where device implementation lives. and Actually, this device, device implementation is something that will be, could be actually uh, the um, deployment specific. This is vendor specific and can, it can be easily switched with a kind of a uh, simulation device implementation so that it instead of pushing the data to the AVB or A2B will push data to MATLAB. Um. So, do you see, Piotr, this um, solution as um, identical when we talk about the PC environment that the hypervisor would be running on the PC and that the Linux VM uh, as well? Yes, this is uh, this is uh, the, the proof of concept that I showed yesterday, and okay. it is based on on Linux x86. So it's the same Trout VM. I, I've actually used uh, our previous, uh, let's say. Uh, HAL implementation, this proof of concept that was sending via socket the, the, the audio PCM. Uh, but nevertheless, this is just an audio HAL that can be just chair specific, just virtualized. Mm -hmm. but, but, but there is a subtle difference between this picture and the previous because here Trout is uh, pictured inside the Linux uh, host, while on the other it was side by side. Is that a significant difference? Uh, actually, no. Because uh, here you can treat this Linux host as something that is parallel to Trout VM. Okay, uh, okay. The, the, the host is, is uh, having this, uh, let's say, uh, top level kernel, but still the Trout VM has separate kernel that, that runs on his own. And uh, in, in this case, uh, we are using KVM as a type of mixed hypervisor. Okay. It's type one and type two hypervisor. Uh, here you have a pure hyper, pure. Let's say this uh, minimal hypervisor. Okay, so you could even transit between different type of hypervisors, but that wouldn't touch the Trout VM at all, and still the concept would be uh, similar. Yes, or at least with minimal effort. Currently, Trout uh, uh, targets are for ARM six four and uh, yeah, for ARM and and x eight six architecture and uh, can be run on, on different types of hypervisor. 
Okay. For example, Open Synergy is cooperating with Google and, and Qualcomm to provide you uh, uh, this uh, drought solution, this virtualized drought, uh, drought solution based on Cocos hypervisor. And uh, uh, at the same time, the, the, the drought project is uh, also embedded into AOSP uh, tree that is based on uh, cross VM uh, virtual, uh, virtual machine manager uh, solution for KVM. But still, mm -hmm. they can share the same house and the same virtual interfaces to the outside world, to the device implementation. Yeah. So even if, if uh, here is uh, the, the, this Linux x86 is a bit different, still the solution is actually more or less the same. So here you have Linux virtual machine with device implementation. Here, you know, this Trout VM is run with a cross VM that is not a separate machine, but just a user space process on on the on the host. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. I think uh, you explained very well the the this small subtle difference between both. Yeah. So, any comments from from the audience side? I'm really hoping <laughs> on your comments. <laughs> So either um, they mixed something up or <laughs> or maybe everyone is agreeing. I hope for the second. Yeah, I think everyone uh, is, uh, is agreeing about uh, the concept. Uh, for the Trout VM, uh, is the audio relay uh, something that has been implemented by you? And not yes. Part of the, yeah, not part of the Android. Yes, this is uh, actually here for historical reason. Uh, so for the uh, previous POC, uh, when we would last, uh, just uh, the goal was to, to get the raw PCM data from uh, from Android to prove that, that it's not that hard and it can't be done and it's not, uh, let's say, uh, strictly also related task. Uh, we decided to uh, get this audio data via socket, but uh, Standard Selenix policies for Android forbids uh, house to use network socket. Uh, so to uh, to make it work, uh, we added this separate audio relay component that gets uh, data from audio hall via uh, local socket, the, the the Unix socket, which are allowed for for the for the uh, house, and then forward it to external world via network socket via regular. Is the audio is it running on the Linux level or is it uh, running on Android? On Android, on Android, on Android. because uh, it, it communicates with audio hall via uh, this this uh, local socket, the uh, named socket. Okay, so when so they when have to, are... to share the, the disk space in order to yeah, to when you are the upgrading same. the Android, you need to make sure that the audio relay still works in the new Android. Version. Yes, but. Please keep in mind that this is just a POC. I believe that that uh, this could be simplified and uh, this audio relay can get, be get rid of, especially when uh, when the virtual sound specification will be published, and when we will have uh, available implementation of virtual as a sound uh, standard. Then the, this whole VSOC communication for the audio PCM can be uh, can be changed to the virtual sound, which could be bit more efficient or at least more suitable for for um, audio transfer. Yeah, and if, if the audio relay is using the local socket for uh, input and then the VSOC for the output, there is no much risk that that would change in coming Android versions anyhow. Yeah, this, this, this shouldn't be changed because, because those are standard yeah. interfaces, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This is just using Linux socket uh, APIs. Yeah, so so it has a very little uh, dependencies on Android APIs. It it just introduces unnecessary latency. So that's that's the reason why I'm hoping that uh, soon the virtual sound will be published and uh, the Trout VM will switch to, and this audio hall can switch to virtual sound. I guess that open synergy is already some work, uh, some advanced work. Well, yeah, that will depend it. on the on the implementation, Piotr, because the um, the virtual specification itself, I think, just defines the formats of what you put into those vert queues, the in the transfer. Uh, but then, yeah. of course, the implementation may use uh, an, an efficient uh, shared memory or some some kind of efficient. Uh, 
implementation, but I don't think that's uh, actually in the specification itself. So it's it's uh, the the VTQ implementation is is in most cases in responsibility of hypervisor uh, manufacturer mm -hmm. or, or deliverer, uh, but yeah. uh, nevertheless the, the this VTQ of sound uh, will most likely use uh, ALSA API from kernel, so you can have a standard audio hall that will be that can be used just with, like with any other ALSA device. And yeah, as you mentioned, it, uh, the, the transfer mechanism will rely on VHQ, uh, which is actually shared memory and, and passing the descriptors. Yep, should be good. Is that a good point to wrap up the the session today, perhaps? Yeah, I think that at least from audio point, we, we've got some agreement. We, we've got some yeah, uh, yeah. better perspective. We, we, we do have a very um, consistent and uh, nice cooperation between these two topics of the uh, virtualization and the simulation. I think it's kind of uh, two work packages that uh, go well together. Yep. And the Geneva project working on the automotive virtual platform specification, of course, also fits in uh, well with this. It is heavily based on Vertio, uh, although it also covers some some other areas that Vertio either doesn't or, or cannot cover. Um, so, yeah, I think everything is, fairly, is, is very well aligned mm -hmm. going forward, which is good. It's good to yeah, see the yeah. industry getting behind uh, these uh, standardization efforts. Anyone want to share some final thoughts today? Stefan, do you want to uh, say something to wrap up the VL? Uh, yes, so from the VHAL perspective, I understand that the most interesting part is to have the um, standardization of the vehicle signals, which are already happening within the VSS and in the future in CVAI. Uh, mm. So here we could still focus on some kind of this binding layer between the, um, the properties that Google is standardizing, standardizing or proposing to use and, uh, and the VSS, uh, including the tool set, the tooling for or maybe doing some automatic automatic generation of the translation and yep. for the future we could still discuss this um, um, another API approach and if we evaluate the the current solution by providing all the properties using the the car library which is also interesting to see perhaps for for the others. And we could focus on that on the on the next months. Sounds good. Okay. Well, then it's time to wrap up. And uh, I want to thank you all for participating today. Yeah, thank hope you. To, hope now. to hear from you, you again through uh, any of the channels that we have and you can always start with projects.geneva.org and if you find the the contacts there you can also reach out directly to to those of us who have been part of this today thanks again and uh, we'll wrap up for today and i think it's the last session of the of the conference so um thank you very much for a great uh, all member meeting and bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you.